Hello folks, it's bastard fucking hot, um, especially in this room, which appears to be the hottest room in the house, so a bit stupid doing it in here really, but there you go. Um, yes, hello, Don Wilson here from Metal Hand Magazine, um, sweating like a rapist, um, which is a lovely thing to say, isn't it? Um, anyway, today uh, I'm going to talk to you about the new Architects album, Daybreaker, um, which came out well, today's Tuesday. Whether or not you're watching this on a Tuesday largely depends on Merlin or the Slade. You're probably not. You're probably watching it on a, like a Thursday or something. Um, but um, Merlin's very busy, so uh, you know. Um, so um, yes, Daybreaker by Architects came out on Monday, um, and it is. Um, I think. Hang on a minute. One, two, three, four. It's their fifth album, and um, it's an interesting one, really, because. Um, so I'm just looking something up while I'm fannying about. I love the fact that Wikipedia describes them as a math core band. I suppose they might have been initially. Anyway, um, yeah. So I'm being a bit vague. So it's the heat. You see, fucking boiling. I'm gonna I'm gonna fan myself with a copy of On VHS by The Fierce and the Dead. Um, yeah. I mean, basically, the the story is really the the, the story behind this album is. Uh, I mean, a year ago, or eighteen months ago, I did an interview with Architects um, for a Metal Hammer front cover, and they were about to release their fourth album, which is called The Here and Now, um, and it was obviously a, 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 not exactly a radical departure for the band, but it was it was you know measurably and and and. You know, very specifically different from their previous three albums. Now, I um, wasn't the biggest fan of their first album. I thought it was okay. I thought it was a bit naive and, and um, you know, kind of just one of those kind of post Dillinger albums that you know didn't really offer anything new. But certainly, Ruin and particularly Hollow Crown, I thought were great records. Um, and they're a local band to me. They're from Brighton, um, which is just down the road from here. And um, and you know, I like to I like supporting British bands, and I and I, I really thought that with Hollow Crown, they they struck upon something really cool, you know. And they were becoming a really really big band at that point, you know. Um, I mean, they are, you know, in in terms of the British metal scene, anyway. Um, although you know, you, you can argue the toss you like about whether whether or not Architects are a metal band. I mean, they they've got elements of metal in their sound, so you know, let's not be total cunts about it. Um, uh, but anyway, the Here and Now was very much not a metal record um, in any way. There was absolutely nothing metal about it. There was maybe two songs that had riffs on it that you could describe as metal. Um, but really, it was a kind of slightly heavier than average post-hardcore record with a few detour detours into kind of ballady territory. And I can't I'm going to look up the name of the song. I mean, I, I say there were two or three tracks that I really liked. Um, uh, you know. For what they were, not you know, not saying it's the kind of music that I would normally listen to, but um, there were some great moments on there. What was the song that I really liked? Can't remember the title. Is it Stay Young Forever? Can't remember. Anyway, <coughs> and Day In Day Out was quite good, you know. Um, but Heartburn, oh dear, that was just a, it was just a terrible thing. I really didn't like that at all. It was kind of Coldplay esque ballad thing, and just ooh, no, thank you. Um, not at all. But I interviewed them, and uh, because you know it was an important stage in their career, and I did the, the cover feature for for Metal Hammer, um, and I think they're brilliant blokes. They're really, you know, they're really intelligent and very passionate about what they do, and um, I think they're a great band, and they deserve every bit of success they get. You know, it's um, in terms of my personal musical taste, Architects are not 100% what I like, as such. Um, but Hollow Crown was a brilliant album. I thought Room was great. Uh, a couple of tracks in here and now I really liked, um, and so automatically I am I was intrigued about hearing the new one um, because I'd read somewhere them saying that they they felt they'd kind of taken a misstep or, or gone too far in one direction or something on the here and now and that, you know it's funny because when I interviewed them they were kind of saying you know this is the kind of music we really want to do and you know it's it's funny how people um, I, I make music myself and I know the feeling you know you kind of head in a particular direction and you think yeah actually no this is this is brilliant this is what you want to do and then actually with hindsight you look back and go no let's be honest no that wasn't really us or that wasn't wasn't quite what I had in mind or you know and, it, and it's easy to kind of um, forget who you are when you're when you're trying to reinvent yourself you know um, so I think Daybreaker is um, 
it represents architects reclaiming their sound to a great degree. And I'm not saying that the Here and Now did them a load of damage, but it certainly did put off, I think it must have alienated a degree of their fan base, you know, although of course they're, you know, like most bands these days, they're used to everybody moaning about everything they do, and, you know, you, you always hear more criticism than you do praise, you know. Uh, but it must be frustrating, you know, to release an album and then hear people go, oh, I don't like it as much as the old stuff over and over again, you know. Um, so anyway, I put on Daybreaker yesterday, um, and gave it a good blast. Um, I mean, on a very simple level, this is uh, a million times better than the here and now. I mean, I, I really, really, really enjoyed this album. And again, there are. I'll, I'll start with the things I don't like about it first, and then I'll tell you what I do like about it because the the uh, the good outweighs the bad tenfold. So it's not you know, and I'm not having a pop at architects tour. I know it's a couple of people. When I mentioned I was going to review them, a couple of people kind of go, "Oh, I can't wait to see this," as if I was going to sit here slagging them off. Well, I'm not going to because I think they're a killer band. So um, you know, it just happens to be in an area of music that I'm not usually associated with, and um, and the kind of thing that I don't generally listen to very much. I'm not post hardcore. That whole post hardcore thing, um, I find pretty flaccid and unexciting and and repetitive and. Um, lacking in balls really and a lot of people trying to be profound when they're not old enough to have anything profound to say I find that irritating the kind of overwrought singing when you sound like a girl doesn't really work for me but I don't think architects are guilty of that stuff now this album there's one or two tracks I will admit that have those kind of post hardcore moments when a melody kicks in and it's a bit overwrought and a bit kind of pseudo emotional kind of thing and I don't doubt architects sincerity for a second you know having spoken to them I think you know they're obviously very sincere about what they do it's just a it's just an aesthetic thing that I don't really get I don't really understand that kind of um, it's not whiny exactly but it's kind of oh I'm so anguished you know and you're just kind of well, you're not are you really you're playing in a band um, if you were that anguished you wouldn't be able to get out of bed um, but there you go but that's it. I mean, in terms of in terms of um, the production, in terms of the guitar sound, it's a much more metal album than the Here and Now. There are some fucking crushing riffs on this. I mean, gen genuinely crushing riffs. They're very much in that kind of um, post Dillinger, uh, post Meshuggah kind of um, polyrhythmic kind of thing. Uh, quite simple and straightforward in a kind of hardcore way, but but metal. You know, there's there's enough metal in it that you could describe this as a metal album to some degree. Um, I'm not familiar enough with the song titles to tell you which tracks I particularly like, but there are, you know, like I say, the the, the, the tracks that I was less keen on, there's a track called Truth Be Told, which was a bit emoty, um, and another one, um, but actually, yeah, you see, the, the final track on the album, I mean, like on the last album, they had Heartburn, which I thought was diabolical, I've got to be honest, and, and so wet you could flip in, you know, um, dip your biscuit in it, but, um, but Unbeliever at the end of this album, which is a very, very much a kind of um, ballady, slow, gentle, you know, non-riffy song, um, you know, very much an, an album ender. I think it's actually a really good song. I mean, I think the lyrics are, I don't know, I mean, I, I find it hard to relate to what people are saying when they're 15, 20 years younger than me, but but um, a lot of the time, you know, because their life experiences are so different, but it's actually quite a nice poetic little song, you know, and, uh, and I think the tune's great, and the arrangement's brilliant, you know, and, and uh, it's great, but the the thing I love about this album, anyway, <clears throat> the reason why I commend Daybreaker by Architects to you, is that the out the, the heavier songs absolutely kick ass. I mean, they the, you know this is a this is a crushing record in many ways. I mean, the opening track, the bitter end, is a great kind of in, almost like more of an intro than a song. <clears throat> but then Alpha Omega, um, and these colours don't run. Not a cover of the Iron Maiden song of the same name. I used to add. Uh, there's a brilliant bit in it. When it when it just stops and Sam uh, the vocalist screams you fucking pigs, and I think if a, if a lot of people did that, I mean I'm not sure of the context because I don't know the lyrics, but but if a lot of people of bands of their generation did that, I would kind of snort tea out of my nose and go oh shut up you silly children. But actually it sounds totally convincing. I think it's you know um, the thing with architects is they 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 got going when they were really young, and I think they're maturing now at a, at a, at a steady rate, and, and I think that they're. they're they're nailing it now. I think this album really nails their sound. I think it's better. I actually think it's their best record. I wasn't going to say that, but I'm, I've decided it is their best record. Um, the title track, or kind of title track, Daybreak, I think is another killer tune. Um, Devil's Island. Ah, oh, Devil's Island. See, these colours don't run on Devil's Island are my two favourite songs in the album. They're both really heavy, rammed with great riffs, you know. And again, I mean, it's that thing of, uh, I, I don't mind clean vocals, and I think if, if clean vocals are, you know, most of my favourite singers sing clean, um, but I just don't like clean vocals when they sound whiny, and I don't like clean vocals when the bloke 
concerned, the singer concerned, sounds like a 14 year old girl or like he hasn't started shaving yet. You know, you just think, well, I'm, you know, it's not, that's not, for me, that's not what metal's about. Metal is about aggression and power. And if you sound like you couldn't snap a twiglet, then, you know, I don't really, I'm not really interested. You know, it's not about necessarily being macho or being a guru tough guy. But um, it's got to have balls behind it, you know. I mean, that's what rock and roll's supposed to be about, you know. And, and I think um, heavy metal in particular, it has to have power and it has to have aggression. Um, and a lot of these metalcore bands with clean singers, you think it, it, you're doing all right until the clean singing kicks in. And then it just sounds like some awful emo band. And you just think, no, why are you doing this? You know, it's not, this isn't metal. You don't understand metal. You obviously have no affinity with what metal is about. And, um, and architects are not guilty of that on this album because uh, Sam's clean vocals are great. They're genuinely good. You know, he's got a really good voice. It's got a real kind of raw edge to it, um, a lot of power. Um, the melodies suit the songs. They don't overuse them. They're not. They're not. Um, you know. They're not kind of um, doing that thing where it's heavy verse, melodic chorus, or every bloody song. You know. It's used sparingly. The clean vocals and these aggressive vocals are great. I mean, they're genuinely good. He's got a great, great scream on him. Um, and the riffs are killer. You know, they're an incredibly tight band. The rhythm section are, are locked in really tight, and um, and it's. Um, I don't know. It's just a really good mixture of stuff, actually, and, and I wouldn't describe it as a metal album, a metalcore album, or any of those things. I think they've got their own sound now, you know, and there are elements of post-hardcore, and there are elements of, I suppose, punk rock and indie rock in there, and those influences come through, as they did on the Here and Now, but whereas on the Here and Now it was clumsy, pushing things too far, a bit wet, lacked the necessary balls to, to make people like me care, really... Um, this album I'm, I'm going to listen to and I think I should listen to it a lot you know whether or not it'll make my top 20 at the end of the year I don't know probably not because there's so many death metal albums that I'm more likely to enjoy but I think you know I think you have to have a degree of objectivity when it comes to these things and I think I mean subjectively I think this is a fucking great album objectively I think for the kind of music that architects are more, you know, more readily, more usually associated with, which I think is this, it's kind of like there's two metal scenes. There's there's the the, the full on metal scene, which is about heavy metal and derivatives thereof, um, and then there's this other scene which has kind of emerged from the hardcore world, which is bands that you know, in if if the two things haven't crossed over, they would be hardcore bands or emo bands, you know, but. Um, They've also grown up listening to a mixture of stuff. So you've got a lot of kids that are very much into Dillinger and, and Refused and Converge and all that kind of stuff, but also into Decapitated and Gojira. Um, and, you know, they're of that generation where they don't really see the difference, you know. And if you've got into Decapitated, there's a chance you'll get into, you know, other death metal and stuff like that. And uh, it's just a matter of, what, you know, which, which side of the fence you find more aesthetically appealing. And I think if you're not into wearing black, having long hair, listening to Saxon and Dio and... And that whole and the whole metal culture, then I think you're more likely to kind of feel an affinity with Bring Me the Horizon and Architects and, and all that kind of stuff. Um, even though to me that you know has very little to do with metal culture, but that's not quite, that's not to criticise it. That's just a statement of fact as far as I'm concerned. But anyway, um, but yeah, this uh, this is for, for this kind of music. I think Daybreaker is is as good an album as I've heard. You know, and I and I, and I can't I don't really want to define it. They're not a mathcore band. They're not a post hardcore band. They're not a traditional metal band in any way. Um, they're not a metalcore band. They're a mixture of all these things, apart from the traditional metal bit. Um, and they've I think what they've done here is actually struck upon their sound. You know, I think Hollow Crown was getting there, but they obviously wanted to put more melody into what they were doing. They, they did that on the here and now, but they took it too far, and it was a bit wussy. This they've uh, they've eliminated the wuss factor on Daybreaker, and even the even the mellow softer tracks have have an edge to them on this album. Um, and I think they've come up with an album that really totally defines who Architects are in 2012, which I think is brilliant. And um, like I say, they're really top blokes as well. You know, they're very intelligent and passionate about what they do, which is um, you know not always easy to convey to people when you haven't spoken to them on a personal level, you know, so when we take exception to bands, we think, oh, Black Veil Brides, what a bunch of cunts they are. But I interviewed Matey from the Black Veil Brides, and he was a lovely bloke, really intelligent and witty and, and self-deprecating, and, and, you know, didn't give a flying fuck how he was perceived by people that didn't like his band. And that kind of, you know, when you get the opportunity to talk to people, it does kind of change your perspective on these things. And having spoken to architects, um, they're proper sound people, you know, who really care about their music, and... and and are um, conscientious about the artistry involved. It's not just about you know bashing out another album and going on the road. Ooh, we're going to be rock stars. You know, they actually really care about their music, and I think that really comes across in Daybreak because it's a really um, intelligent and passionate and crafted record. 
um, and the best thing they've ever done. There you go. So that's me waffling on for 14 minutes about architects. I never thought I'd talk for that long about it, but um, I think it's a fucking brilliant record. I'm going to listen to it again in a minute. Um, yeah. It, well, you know, I'm probably going to prefer the new Man of War album, I'll be honest, but that doesn't mean that this isn't a great, a great album. If I was reviewing it for somebody, I'd give it 8 out of 10 and say this is a belter. So there you go. Um, thanks for watching me. It's not my hat. It's just to stop the sun from burning my face. I'm actually completely bald under it. Um, so, uh, yeah. I forgot what I was going to say now. Probably wasn't interested. Right. Um, shove it up your ass, and uh, I'll see you for the next one. Cheers.